Yik Yak is an anonymous location-based social media platform with reputation for cyberbullying. Back in 2013, the original version of Yik Yak released and blew up on school campuses from middle schoolers to university students. After shutting down in 2017 due to a lack of popularity, Yik Yak came back the fall of 2021, coinciding with the start of the school year. The app has a fairly popular presence on the University of North Texas campus, but what is it that makes Yik Yak unique, both in its construction and community? Yik Yak fosters an adult, provocative, and often hostile environment that is heavily localized in regards to the expression of gender and sexuality. In the studied areas of North Texas, hegemonic cis-normativity is a major factor in the politics of the platform, with many users seeking affirmation in their actions and either upholding or subverting this hegemony. There is also a lack of traceable accountability, with users being able to hide behind complete anonymity with nearly no repercussions. The sign-up process for Yik Yak only allows you to enter your phone number. That phone number then receives a text with a verification code to enter into the app to complete the sign-up process. You cannot factor in any other information or demographics, like email, name, age, gender, etc., to your profile during the sign-up process. There's also no age verification for this app. Since many yaks are sexual in nature and are seeking hookups or soliciting drugs, there should ideally be a barrier of entry for minors. With no gender attached to a profile during sign-up process, neither through internal coding nor external iconography, a user can shed any aspect of themselves to perform gender on a space that fosters complete anonymity. However, this usually results in people working to reinforce hegemonic gender and heterosexuality rather than exploring gender or sexuality in a queer way. After signing up, Yik Yak ensures that the new user understands the basics of their community guardrails. While these guardrails have a lot of positive things to say, many of them are sweet nothings when it comes to how the end user actually experiences the app. Yik Yak claims that it does not allow content that is sexually explicit, whether it be for bragging or seeking hookups, nor does it supposedly allow discrimination towards quote unquote intrinsic characteristics. Notice the interesting choice of categories here, with the exclusion of sexuality. However, these guardrails are not enforced by any moderators, and instead, the app relies on users to report posts that are breaking the guidelines. This means that a homophobic post can fly by if the local herd doesn't find anything wrong with what's being said. There are a few words that are automatically tagged as inappropriate and lead to a yak being taken down instantly, but no master list of these words could be found. Doing my own experiments led to interesting results, with some slurs being caught, but not the main transphobic slur. And in fact, I was met with an immediate upvote for posting it. Your herd is the group of people whose posts you see and who your yaks go out to. It's a five mile radius that determines your post's audience. The app now has the option of saving spaceships where you can save a current location to access when you're no longer present. For example, I have my campus location saved so that I can see posts from near campus when I'm home in Frisco. Your location will greatly affect the views of the yakers nearby. When I post queer-related yaks near campus, I am met with much more support than when I post the same yak in Frisco. I'm sure that if I went to a further rural location, the metrics for this would be even worse. However, this app is not just available in Texas. Surely the gender politics of San Francisco yik yak are going to be localized the same way it is in North Texas. Every yak a user posts can either be completely anonymous or tagged with their conversation icon. This conversation icon also appears when a user makes a comment on a yak that is not their own. This icon can be changed at any time, meaning if a user left an unpopular comment that others could recognize them by, they can switch to a new conversation icon and reset how the timeline sees them. However, these icons are randomized, so a user cannot tailor make their icon to reflect parts of their identity, in terms of gender, sexuality, or otherwise. There is no way to see another user's complete post or comment history the way one may be able to on Reddit. A user has no way to tell if another poster is a regular troll to the platform or if they're being sincere. 
However, the lack of post history and traceability leads this app to have some transgender design aspects in its fluidity. Users have complete freedom to perform gender and sexuality in a way that it's accurate to themselves or pretend to be someone else entirely. The degrees of gender experimentation depend heavily on location. Around campus, I witnessed more praise for queer gender and sexual exploration than Yaks and Frisco. Like Reddit, the most popular idea posted is going to get upvoted and unpopular opinions are downvoted. The total number of upvotes and downvotes on a given yak or comment represents its yak karma score. The yak karma score doesn't affect where the yak is on the default chronological timeline, but is if you go to the hot timeline. This upvote system leads to an echo chamber effect on the app, with people upvoting their own posts and downvoting those who they disagree with, even if the downvoted yak in question falls within the community guidelines. Any post with minus five downvotes will result in the yak being taken down. Popular opinions will remain and unpopular opinions won't, whether they are harmful or not. This popularity is dependent on location, as are many other aspects of Yik Yak. Toxic technocultures are unique in their leveraging of socio-technological platforms as both a channel of coordination and harassment, and their seemingly leaderless, amorphous quality. At the same time, individuals affiliated with toxic technocultures both champion the power of the community as a way to affect change or voice displeasure with others they view as being adversaries, while still distancing themselves from what they perceive as the more ethically dubious and illegal actions of others, suggesting they are not really part of whatever toxic technoculture under which they are acting.